Hi, I'm Holly McFarlane. I am the PR Director for East Texas Communities Foundation, and East Texas Giving Day falls under my umbrella of responsibilities. Um, so every year, we host trainings, webinars, seminars, and try to provide some content for our nonprofit participants in order for them to have a successful Giving Day event. So this year, we are doing some best practices. And so I have a friend with me today. I'd like for her to introduce herself. So. Um, what's your name and what's the organization that you're with? Yes, I'm Cheryl Torres and I'm the director of Elijah's Retreat. And last year was our first year to be a part of East Texas Giving Day. Excellent, excellent. So how long have you been with Elijah's? Three years. Okay. Um, can you tell me about the mission of the organization? Sure. Elijah's Retreat is a sanctuary for families facing autism. So we're a 50-acre dude ranch for families to be able to come out and stay as a unit. And we have three little cabins for the families to stay at. They get to do equine therapy, basic horsemanship lessons. They get to run on a 50-acre ranch and play with therapeutic animals like goats and bunnies <laughs> and all the things that kids love to do. Mm -hmm. But it's structured in a way that it's very um, inviting and safe um, for autistic kids to be able to explore the way they want to explore. Excellent, excellent. Uh, how did you hear about East Texas Giving Day? Through the Bright Ideas Conference. Oh, okay, yeah, very good. That's hosted by our local United Way. Yes, okay. yes ma'am. Um, and what made your organization decide you wanted to give it a try? Um, meeting you guys at Bright Ideas Conference um, and hearing about it the year previous. Um, so our first year, my first year at Elijah's Retreat and first year in East Texas, I heard about the um, East Texas Giving Day, but I was too late on it all. I heard it as it was happening, right? Okay. And saw all the publicity for it and thought, well, that's something maybe I want to be a part of. And so then I saw you at the Bright Ideas Conference and talked to you guys about it and uh, then saw all the information that you guys had laid out for us of how to do it, and it seemed doable. Okay, very good. And before participating in East Texas Giving Day, had you had any um, exposure, had you done anything um, on uh, social media fundraising? Have you, had you ever done anything like that? Um, a small degree, um, as far as we had you know, hosted a, you know, an, a little auction or little things here or there that I was advertising more in the Jacksonville area, um, but not as much into Tyler. Okay. Okay. So you, that's right. You're a Cherokee County. We are. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, did you set a goal? Did your organization have a goal for your fundraising on East Texas Giving Yes, ma'am. Okay. And? And our goal, um, well, so to be honest, I don't even know if you know this. Our goal to start with was 10000 okay. And so then we got a $5,000 matching, and then I started getting money to come in previous to launch day for East Texas Giving Day, and I raised it to 20000 and we hit it. Excellent. Mm -hmm. That's so. fabulous. No, I did not know that. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Uh, did, did your staff, or is it just you? Well, I guess I should ask that. How many? How so it's me and one part-time person. Okay. And that's it. So you're looking at the staff of Elijah's <laughs> Retreat. <your> team. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So did, I guess you took advantage of our online trainings or yes. in-person trainings at a certain point. I took advantage of all the online because that was the easiest for me. Being a one-man kind of team with a part-time person there, um, I have you know over 200 families out at Elijah's Retreat a year, so I am really busy with them all the time, and so this was something I could do either when it was live or I could watch it later. Yeah. Um, and so that was a huge asset to me to be able to pull and use it 9 o'clock at night when my kids are sleeping uh -huh. um, and take my notes and figure out what I needed to know. And, and you guys were so accessible as well, which was great. If I had questions, I could get and you get sure. right back to me right away. Um, you cared, and that mattered to me. Thank you. One of the things that we do after the webinars is we posted all those on our website, and so those were archived. Uh, they're posted on YouTube through our um, East Texas Giving Day channel. So you um, can go back into the historic viewing of past uh, sessions that we've had at any time because those are those are just out there for the masses to enjoy. Um, or even to watch twice. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you need to go back and take notes again. I can say I've gone back and watched them. <laughs> yes. Because I'm like, what did I say? How did that work? Yeah. <laughs> How does this work again? <laughs> You're right. Um, <laughs> so um, walk me through your campaign. You were talking about it a moment ago, but like day one, you're thinking, okay, we're going to do this. And that was back in January ish. Right. Uh huh. Um, so through January, February, March, like what was the time commitment? What did you. Sure. Uh, you know, obviously you listen to the webinars, but what were you thinking, like, this is how we're going to implement? Sure. Um, so initially, you know, I, I didn't 100% know what I was walking into, right? <laughs> it's a new, new thing. You don't really know all of it. Um, and I thought I was going to have to go to all these in-person trainings, so I was delighted when they became virtual mm -hmm. and that, that was accessible for me. 
So, you know, I was watching those at night, kind of making my game plan. Um, again, I, we're a 50-acre ranch, so I have animals out there that I could pull from. I was, it's easy for me to be able to also get approval from the families to video them and to get their input on that and to use, I have a lot of family pictures and things like that already that I already had stored that I knew I could draw from yeah. um, and to help kind of paint the story, right? And so how our season works at Elijah's Retreat is we're open from March 1st to mid-November. So when I started this in January, that was my prep season. I didn't have anyone out there yet, right? And then March 1st starts, and I we were full um, from the 1st of March until we close in the middle of November. And we, um, so the first couple of families that came out in that, that first week of March, I was take, asking pictures, I was getting video footage, I was, you know, all those things, getting it all kind of pre-planned what I was going to, you know, post and do all of that with. Um, and we do fun things, like we do a feed run in the morning where we pick up the kids, uh, the whole family comes and we feed all of the animals, they get to hand feed the goats. And so you know, I thought, okay, I'll do a live um, feed run that day uh -huh. um, to kind of draw everybody in and kind of see, let everybody know kind of what we do yeah. um, and the effect that that has. Then come March 18th, right, the whole world closed down, mm -hmm. right? So we, we closed, just like everybody else in Texas, not knowing what that was going to mean, really, mm -hmm. um, knowing that we really, we operate, you know, a third of our budget comes from the families coming out there. They pay only $45 a night, and so I knew that, okay, if they're not coming out here, we don't know when they're gonna be able to come back out here, this is gonna be tough, yeah. right? Um, and then also knowing what is this gonna do for foundations? What is this gonna do for funders? What is this, you know, not knowing, right? So like, okay, I gotta, I've got the time now, I'm gonna put everything into East Texas Giving Day and just see, I don't know what that's gonna be like, but it's a virtual event. So we can do it, right? Yeah. And so I thought, well, perfect. No better better time for a virtual mm -hmm. event, yeah. <laughs> to be that's, honest. That's what we thought. <laughs> right? And so I was like, okay, well, we're just going to run with it. And uh, just started putting things together. Um, fortunately, had a great training through the um, United Way here in okay. Tyler on um, Facebook and Facebook marketing. Um, and so that was, that was huge. Um, she was able to then kind of make sure one of my Facebook page was up to date, it was like functioning correctly, but also how to boost correctly and how to target people that would be interested in what you're doing. So you did like an audit of your social media. Did. That's fabulous. Yes. That's a great assessment. And that was huge. And then just listening to her and talking to her and getting her advice on the timeline of when to start sending stuff out. Don't wait till East Texas Giving Day, right? Mm -hmm. Everything shows up, you know, a week to two weeks in Facebook. So yeah. you gotta start that all early. Um, and then just, you, I think you had said in one of the videos, is just keep sharing all day long. All day long. Don't stop. Mm -hmm. Keep shouting it out there. And I felt silly doing it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, it's just me, you know. And so I felt weird putting myself out there. But you know what? The more that I did, the more that more people realized what we were doing at Elijah's Retreat. So, yes, we raised the money that we needed that day to finish a fourth cabin for Elijah's okay. Retreat, which was huge. But we also spread a lot of awareness of what we're really doing at Elijah's Retreat because people had heard about it, people hadn't heard about it, and they were um, impressed and surprised with all, what all we're actually really doing out there. I knew I had never heard of you until East Texas Giving Day. So, I mean, kudos. You, <laughs> part of cutting through the noise is just getting the awareness, and that's a lot. East Texas Giving Day collectively, um, with all the voices that come through it, um, allows your your name and everything to become more aware. People will start understanding what you're doing and stuff. So it's the awareness factor that um, is very helpful from Giving Day. Well, it is, and you have the platform for that. And so by for not a small profit nonprofit agency like us, you're broadcasting that for us. I got to give you the message, but then you're broadcasting it for me, and that's to help. And it, it's huge. It yeah. makes a big difference. And you guys got to be a part of um, our local media sponsor, um, mm -hmm. KETK NBC. Yep. They do a midday show, and they dedicated four hours. They did. That was amazing. Of day. their day, uh, they took all of their midday programming off and and highlighted our charities that were participating in East Texas Giving Day. And so you were one of the charities that they picked. Yes, so how was that experience? Oh, it was great. I took a little bunny up there with me, and so everybody in the entire studio remembers Thumper, the yeah. little bunny, and uh, and. Pops are good. <laughs> Good. Especially cute little buddy. Especially cute bunny frog. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and so, uh, so no, that was an amazing chance to be able to be there and meet them. And then um, I, in doing that, I also got to meet them and got contacts there. Right. And so we just had um, a fall festival for Elijah's Retreat back in November, uh -huh. a couple weeks back. 
and they uh, came they let me interview with them again oh, virtually nice. but uh, it had the bunny on there again and uh, it's a crowd of course, in the background <laughs> <laughs> yes ma'am that's great um so it's it continues to to bless us Very so good. thank you see mm. and that's a resource so what east texas giving day strives to do is provide the nonprofits with the tools and the resources that they can implement throughout the year on other campaigns yes, as well. Yes, That's, it's a teaching moment. It we is. We want you guys to be successful fundraisers. So we try to expose you to these different concepts right. so that you can be sustaining. Totally. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I love what M, M. Roberts Digital did as well for us, the training of, you know, make sure your phone's not this way, but it's this way. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, all those little tidbits that I didn't know. That, I mean, I think I took the most notes from that training. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. And, and then, you know, implemented them and used them, and it, it made a big difference. Excellent. So, um, so you had a match. How, mm -hmm. did you, uh, how did you find a partner? Was it a corporate partner or a family? It's or how multiple. Did you get that? Um, it was multiple. So um, Kiwanis in Jacksonville okay. um, had, a, um, had already promised me money towards a fourth cabin. They, like, maybe it was at the end of December. And so, um, but they hadn't given it to me until mm -hmm. March. They promised me it would be in March. So I asked if I could use that as a matching for East Texas Giving Day, and they were delighted to do that. Excellent. And then it was also, um, it was just a, another family member, a brother-in-law, um, whose business was able to donate some. Um, the Rotarians in Jacksonville as well came through for me, and um, Austin Bank in Jacksonville right. came through. So it's just, I kind of collaborated. You did a great collaboration. And it's great to have those civic, um, those civic minded individuals from those different clubs participate because it brings more awareness as well. And they're going to follow your story because they want to see their money do good. And that's why they're, that's why they're in those organizations. Um, I'm hoping that post Giving Day you went back and gave a presentation to both clubs. Yes. Okay, excellent. Before and after. Very yes. good. Yes. When COVID impacted everything, um, you knew you had to pivot. Yeah. So talk about like, like what you had to do. What I know you were saying that you had to totally refocus, but it, it gave you time. It gave me a little bit of time with that, um, but yeah, we refocused in a lot of ways. You know, again, not knowing really are we gonna, are families gonna be able to come out there? At what point are they gonna be able to come out there? Um, and all of that, but also really, again, you know, we're focused on the families that we serve and knowing that they're now stuck at home, they're not in school, their whole life got turned upside down, which yeah. with autism isn't a good thing. Routine is everything for them. Um, and then parents who were working you know, now are trying to work from home with an mm -hmm. autistic kid, which is real interesting. Um, and so I knew they needed support, and I knew that the kids needed something to look forward to. So we started doing um, virtual feed runs with them. We started doing story time at night with them. We started doing all these different things that they could still have to look forward yeah. to and interact, even though they're at home. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we had to pivot with that regard, pivoted with fundraising. You know, we started very quickly in April, started hearing from our foundations who had previously funded us. Hey, we don't know what we're going to do. We know we're not doing our fundraising things. This year are all on hold. We don't, we're not sure what the bottom line is going to be. You know, so it's like we just had to pivot, but that's, yeah. uh, since I took over Elijah's Retreat three years ago, that's all I've been doing is pivoting. <laughs> so I was used to pivoting, uh, rethinking outside the box. Um, okay, so you use social media to promote your organization with Facebook Live yes, on Giving Day. Yes, ma'am. Um, what was your approach? You said it made you uncomfortable. So, uh, well, just putting yourself out there on, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, just getting out there on Facebook Live. I had never done that before mm -hmm. prior to taking over Elijah's retreat. That wasn't, I'm not, I wasn't a Facebook person, fair enough, but yeah. I am now. Um, you know, the really cool thing about Facebook um, is, so we took over Elijah's retreat um, in, 20, in November 2017, so it's just been three years. So in 2017, there were 35 families that came out to Elijah's retreat. In 2018, there were 154 families. Last year, um, there were 2019, there were um, 204 families. This year, close to 200, right, with 60 reservations canceled due to COVID, oh, wow. which is amazing, right? So it would have been at 260 if we weren't closed for those six weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, um, with that, all of my marketing, all of my advertising is through word of mouth and through Facebook. I have not spent a dime on any other marketing than that. And that's the tool that Facebook is nowadays for everybody. And for nonprofit and organizations that are small like us, it's a huge tool because it doesn't cost money. It just takes time learning how to use it correctly and how to get yourself out there and how to put stuff out there and what to put out there. Put pictures of kids, of faces, of animals, yes. of not just a whole bunch of words. That doesn't mm -hmm. spread, but pictures, emotions, yeah. heart tags. 
that's what spreads and that's what uh, that's what gets your name out there and helps fundraise. Yeah, that's great. Um, okay, so is there any uh, tips, tricks, or um, anything that you would like to, as a final thought, share yeah. with um, our, our viewers of this? Um, I'm just really glad that we were a part of East Texas Giving Day. I think it was a huge asset for us to make connections to more businesses, to um, to media, to just more people awareness of who we are um, as an organization. You had 5500 in matching dollars. Yes, ma'am. And your net revenue from the event was 20 you uh -huh. said? Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's a good 18-hour day. <laughs> that took four well, months. <laughs> it took more, it more than 18 hours, but yes, ma'am, it was. It was definitely, it was excellent. huge for us to be able to build that fourth cabin. Excellent, excellent. Well, that's it for today, and we appreciate everyone um, paying, you know, coming and viewing this with us, and um, we look forward to the next one. See you soon.